Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Rick Campo, the Chairman and CEO of Camden Property Trust. Rick, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, Camden recently completed a sizable disposition program to rid itself of some of your older, underperforming assets. Can you talk a little bit about how the company is positioned after that activity and what your focus on now? Sure. Well, the, the, it was a, a, a big disposition, uh, $1.2 billion. And um, the, the idea around it, just to start with, was about, uh, you know, in this current environment with low interest rates and uh, the spread between older assets and newer assets in terms of the pricing was the tightest I've seen in my business career. So we just sold into that big time. Just to give you a sense, uh, average age, it was about 23 years. Uh, we made an 11% on leverage R IRR, holding them for 17 years. So pretty, pretty impressive numbers. But uh, what it did to our portfolio is it, it allows us then to take the proceeds and invest into, into new development. So in 2011, our average age of our portfolio was 12 years old. And today, in 2016, it's 12 years old. It's hard to you know, sort of stop that aging process every year. So what we're, we're able to do is renew the portfolio and, and really position it to grow really well in the future and be more relevant to the consumer today because it's newer. And picking up on that a little bit, how is Camden's current development pipeline looking? And in any of the core markets where you operate, are you seeing any signs of overbuilding yet? Well, our development pipeline is doing really well. Uh, it, it is slowing. Uh, we, we peaked at about 1.1 billion, and we have about six or 700 million under construction now. We'll be adding 200 to 300 million annually. And we're sort of, uh, when you think about where we are in the cycle, I mean, we're not in the first inning of this recovery. And so it just makes sense to slow that down uh, in, in terms of uh, the growth in the pipeline. In terms of overbuilding, you know, most, par most markets are not overbuilding. They're just kind of in, in balanced supply and demand. You can have a couple markets like Houston, for example, that that uh, that is definitely overbuilt, and but, but you've seen construction starts uh, stop, you know, go down dramatically in that market. But generally speaking, the market's in pretty good supply and demand balance. Great. Now, looking at the demographic factors, you know, we hear a lot about millennials and baby boomers. Which, for you at Camden, are, are having a bigger impact on the bottom line, and and what? differences are there in terms of attracting them as tenants? Well, the, uh, they are competing with each other right now, which is really interesting. Uh, but millennials are definitely the, the, the mo more important customer, even though at the margins the boomers are coming in. Uh, so the, the interesting thing about millennials is they are, they, are, they are just motivated very differently than the boomers, for sure. And uh, it's all it, definitely more social media. I mean, we're, we're investing a lot in technology because they want to figure things out on their phone. And if you, don't, if you aren't able to sign a lease on your phone, you're going to be in trouble with millennials. But the, the fascinating part is watching them compete with the baby boomers, especially in, in urban projects. So what's happening to the boomers is they're coming in not in the same numbers as the millennials because there's just so many more millennials that are, that are of, of rental age as opposed to the, the baby boomers moving in. But the boomers are coming into the urban core because they don't want to drive anymore. Their kids are in school or out of college or in college and, and they want that kind of urban feel. So it is interesting watching them compete and then actually co habitate in the same projects. Camden is regularly rated as one of the top places to work in America. Um, so congratulations on that. But, but within that environment, how much of a priority do you as the CEO put on mentorship? Mm -hmm. and, and can you maybe talk about someone who played a, a key mentor role in, in your career? Sure, I think mentorship is huge. It really is. We have hundreds of mentors in Camden. We actually have a Camden mentor program and it, and it, uh, where we train the people on how to be good men mentors. And then they, they have a cycle that they go through over a two or three year process uh, to be mem mentors because we know that people really need help in their careers. And when you have somebody who, who has a lot of experience who can give that help, it, it makes them better employees. It creates a, a, a more sort of robust culture, if you will. And that's one of the reasons we, we score really high on those best places to work lists. But in terms of my mentor, uh, I had a, several mentors for sure, and, uh, and and one in particular I remember was a was a um, a guy from um, Scotland, and, and he was a, a, a certified uh, accountant, not a public accountant, because in Scotland had different definition, but. But he uh, helped me through my business career and, and also helped me understand that, that it wasn't about making money in terms of your business success. It was about how many jobs you created. And once you get 
to the point where you understand that it's more, that business is more than the bottom line. It's it's really the 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 taking care of your customers first, your employees, and your shareholders. And, and if you put them in that order, then ultimately the value proposition for shareholders and your bottom line will follow. If you focus on the customers and the employees first, and he was one that really helped me. Great. Well, Rick, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks. For more from REIT World 2016, be sure to visit REIT.com.